Mark Rogers TV here with you to compare the conferences. This is our little off-season project each and every year. We compare the Power 5 conferences. So we not only look at the results, but we break them down and give them meaning and definition and weight them. So this is what happens. We're starting with the ACC this year. And on the surface, the ACC performed horribly against the other four major conferences. 11 wins and 18 losses. But... Of course, not all wins and losses are created equal. If, for example, your 10th seeded team in your conference loses to the champion in another conference, well, that's understandable. So we give relevance and weight to these games. So here's how it breaks down for the ACC. The conference played 29 games against the other four Power 5 leagues. They won 11, lost 18. Okay, in those wins, the ACC... Those teams that won those 11 games in the ACC were 106 and 40 overall win loss record, 68 and 24 in the ACC. So those were strong teams, as you might expect, winning 11 consecutive games against the other Power Five teams. So they're an average four seed. So what I do is I take all the leagues and I seed the teams based on conference record, overall record and head-to-head -head matchups to break ties. And I seed them 1 through 14, or in the Big 12's case, 1 through 10, or the Pac-12 at 1 through 12. And then I need to adjust those seedings to match the Big 10, the SEC, and the ACC at a 1 through 14 rating. So, the teams that the ACC defeated 11 times, the Big 12, the Big 10, the SEC, and the Pac-12, well, those teams went 67 and 71. So you would expect that the good teams from the ACC beat bad teams from out of conference at 67 and 71, and those teams went 30 and 44. So we give relevance to that also in looking at the average seeding for those teams in the other conferences at just about eight and a half. So what games are we talking about? Well, Clemson really helped the cause for the ACC in defeating Notre Dame. That was the one subjective call we had to make. So we placed Notre Dame as a top seven team, team in the country as a number one seed. That was a close call, number one seed, number two seed for the Irish. So Clemson beat Notre Dame, Clemson beat Oklahoma, and they also beat South Carolina, the 14th seed out of the SEC. So this is how we weight the games. So if Clemson being a one seed defeats Oklahoma as a one seed, each and every game starts as a 20. That's a plus 20 for the ACC. Any game that that particular conference wins starts as a plus 20. Now, if the seeding is equal, then it stays as a plus 20. So Clemson is a one seed defeated in the college football playoffs. Oklahoma is a one seed. So that's a plus 20 for the ACC. And when we get to it a little bit later, a negative 20 for the Big 12. In another case, we have Florida State, a three seed in the ACC, defeating Florida out of the SEC as a two seed. And I know what you might be thinking, that Florida was not the second best team in the SEC. We don't go with subjective analysis there. We go with the objective standings, and Florida at 7-1 and one was the second best team in the standings in the SEC. So Florida State is a three seed, defeated Florida as a two seed. So that also gives an additional point because of the seeding difference to the ACC. So 21 points for the ACC. That will later on be a negative 21 for the SEC. Let's look at a more drastic comparison here. North Carolina, which finished as the number two seed in the ACC, defeated Illinois, the 11 seed out of the Big Ten. So decent win for the ACC, but not necessarily once you uh, size up the seedings. So it starts off as a plus 20 for the ACC, but the difference in seeding is 2 versus 11. Nine seeds take off the nine points uh, for the ACC. So that's a plus 11 game for the ACC. So again, average seeding for the ACC in the wins, a four seed defeats an eight and a half seed. Those are the records for the 11 wins. Okay, for the 18 losses. Pretty marginal teams losing for the ACC, as you might imagine, 117 and 113. Those teams finished, more importantly, because there's a lot of non-Power 5 wins and losses 
reflected in the records, and also FCS wins and losses, mostly wins, of course. So the conference record is huge here. So the ACC teams that lost the 18 games out of conference went 70 and 77 inside the ACC. They lost to teams uh, in the other Power Five leagues that went 65 and 44 within their conference. So, as you might expect, it's almost flip-flopped, almost identical. The average seed that lost those 18 games for the ACC was an 8 seed out of 14 in the ACC, losing to an average 4.7 seed in the other Power 5 leagues. So, of course, the national championship game, Clemson, Alabama. Other losses for the ACC. Louisville, a 5 seed, lost to Auburn, a 10 seed out of the SEC. So, that's a bad loss. An understandable loss would be Syracuse, an 11 seed in the ACC, losing to LSU, a 5 seed. Other discrepancies here. The Notre Dame factor really plays into that 4.7 seeding average for uh, the losses. So outside of the Clemson win over Notre Dame, the Irish defeated the other opponents they had in the ACC, most notably bottom feeders in Boston College, the 14 seed, Wake, the 13, and Georgia Tech, the 12. Didn't appear to be that easy for the Irish going into 2015, but that's the way it played out. And the other win for Notre Dame as a one seed playing Pitt, a four seed in the ACC. So those were discrepancies. And because of the seeding difference, really didn't hurt the ACC, despite contributing to four of the 18 losses overall. Uh, going to Notre Dame. Again, a 1 versus a 12, a 13, and a 14 in Notre Dame defeating the best, uh, the worst teams in the ACC. In bowl play, you had situations where Washington State, a 3 seed in the Pac-12, defeated Miami as a 6 seed. So again, remember our formula, that game starts out as a negative 20 for the ACC, taking into account the seeding differential, a 6 seed in the ACC losing to a three seed in the Pac-12. So add or subtract, I'm sorry, subtract three points from the loss for the ACC. So it's a negative 17. So given credit coming back closer to zero for the ACC in a lower seeded ACC Miami team losing to a higher seeded team out of the Pac-12 in Washington State. So Again, this is how it shakes out. It's going to make a little bit more sense when we throw them all together. So this is our first run through. Check out what we did last year. We've slightly tweaked the formula because of seeding differences with uh, having double digit teams seeded winning and losing games. For example, Clemson at one seed defeated South Carolina 14 seed out of the SEC. So if we start that as a plus 20 for the ACC, take away 13 Due to the seeding differential, it's only a plus seven for the ACC. Last year, we went with the uh, baseline of a plus 10 or minus 10 for a win or loss for the conference, and that couldn't take into account a double digit seeding difference. So we upped it to 20, that's our baseline, and here we go. So the average win for the ACC was a 15.5, the average loss a 23.3. That does not bode too well for the ACC, so they had lower seeds uh, losing those games. So it's also going to be multiplied by 11 and 18. So the ACC on the surface not looking too good because of the obvious record. And then the wins and losses are very understandable. The average four seed defeating an eight and a half and the average eight seed in the ACC losing to a four and a half, which totally makes sense. All right, this is the ACC. We'll knock out the other power four uh, right here on Mark Rogers TV.